Hello, in this MGBA video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Xbox controller, 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series controllers to your Windows machine so you can play Game Boy Advance games emulated. So I'll be doing setup videos for the emulator and controllers on Mac and Linux, so feel free to check them out as well. This video is not condoning piracy, just wanted to get that out of the way. And okay, so first of all, let's cover Xbox 360. If you have an Xbox 360 wired controller, like one of these, the, the wire is not detachable. You plug and pl it's plug and play, plug it in. Any drivers that need to be installed will get installed automatically. You're good to go. If you have a wireless controller, like one of these, you can't use one of these charger cables, unfortunately. I used to think that ages ago, about 15 years ago, I thought that these were, you know, supported data and not just power, but they don't. So you can't use this. So for this, you're gonna need a dongle and you need one of these. Not this, this is just like a Wi Fi dongle because they're original 360s and they come with Wi Fi, but you need a dongle like this. And they can be pretty costly considering it's an expense that you probably didn't think you were gonna, you know, need. And you just press the sync button on top. And then you press the controller sync button as well, which is same position for all the Xbox controllers. Press each one for a few seconds. They'll start, you know, controller and the dongle will start flashing and then you'll connect. Because it doesn't have Bluetooth, if you need the dongle. Okay, so next is Xbox One. This is where it gets a bit interesting and a bit annoying. So if you want to connect via wire, it's fine. You plug in a micro USB cable and you plug it into your computer. Any drivers that need to be installed will get installed automatically. And in terms of, like if you have a wired version only, that works fine as well. But for wireless, if you have an older one like this, you will need a dongle. If you have a newer one like this, you can just use the built-in Bluetooth or Bluetooth on your system, which is probably gonna be built in, especially if you have a laptop. So it is annoying. So what I will do is provide a link to this website this will help you identify if you have a Bluetooth model or a the older proprietary wireless technology model. And once you know that, if you have an older one, then you will need a dongle. And you just plug this in, there's a sync button right there. You just press that, lights start flashing. Then on the controller itself, you press the sync button for a few seconds, this will start flashing and then it's all synced. You can still use the newer Xbox One controllers with the dongle if you've already got that and let's say if you don't have bluetooth so you don't have to run out you don't have to run out and get a bluetooth dongle which is still pretty nice to be fair but what you will need actually if you're using you know the bluetooth one you'll need a bluetooth dongle or some sort of bluetooth you know support on your system and i'll show you how to sync that up in a second because it's the same process as the xbox series controllers which i'm going to cover now and for this, for wired, you just plug in a USB-C cable, other end into your computer, and you're all good to go. If you want to connect it via Bluetooth, which is what this supports, it's really simple, and you just go to Bluetooth, and this is the same for the Xbox One controller. And you go to either add Bluetooth and click Bluetooth there, or go to devices and printers and click add a device in the top. Oh top left and this is the older windows 7 menu i will fall back on this one if the newer menu don't work which sometimes it doesn't okay so click add a blue add bluetooth or device now what we want to do is keep the sync button pressed for a few seconds and this xbox logo will start flashing really fast i'm gonna press it it's flashing click bluetooth it's the xbox wireless controller not this the wireless controller that's something else that's getting picked up. And that's it, the light's gone solid. And I would like to do this as an extra thing. Double check that it's, you know, in there, go to game, set up USB game controllers. And in here, doesn't matter what the name is, click properties. And if the analog stick movements and the button tr events get triggered, then we're all good to go. Okie dokie. So, Unfortunately, I have had z zero luck trying to get the Xbox controllers working with MGBA without using, ooh, where is it? Without using an external tool. So, 
and let me just close the tool down and I'll show you how to install it in a second. This is the issue that I have. If I go to settings, the other controllers, it picks up the Xbox Series X, but when I start to click on that, let's say I want to override it, it doesn't do anything, which is really unfortunate. And it's because it's picked up the control land because it's got, I think, SDL driver, that's the reason it's picked it up. For some reason, my Xbox controller does not work. So if you have this issue, if you don't, then you can literally start mapping it, you know, here, you just click. If not, we're gonna map it as a keyboard, you know, controller, but you need an extra piece of software for that. You need what is called Joy2 key, and I'll provide a link to this in the description as well. So Joy2 key, and go to download, go to download Joy2 key installer, click that. Yes, and I accept agreement. And th that's only, I think that's only appearing because I've already got it installed. And for me, it didn't give me the option of letting me choose where I wanted it to be installed. So I've already got it installed, so therefore you just overrid it. If you don't have it, it'll let you choose where you want to install it. And feel free to change it to a different drive, which I did initially do. So let's launch this up. This is a pretty cool piece of software. And it's already got some mapping because I'd already mapped it. So I'm going to right click, clear all button assignments and they're all clear now. And what we can do is press a button and we'll see, so A is button one, so we double click that. And you don't have to just map your other keyboard, then you can map your other multiple keyboards, so it could be like copy paste. Uh, so this is really, you know, outside of the emulator realm, but you might want it to trigger maybe multiple things. Maybe let's say in Crash Bandicoot, jump and, you know, spin, for example. You can um, do a mouse event, for example. Okay, let's just stick with keyboard. So for this, we'll just press, let's say, A on our keyboard. Press OK. And now for button two, uh, button two, I believe, was B. Yeah, so make sure it's not selected, because otherwise, if it is that one, you won't actually see highlighting. Button two, press B. Um, I'll just quickly map through, but we get the picture now, so X is button three, so I'll put this as X. Y is button four, put this as Y. I'm gonna do the D-pad now. D-pad is just this, this is pretty simple. And you just put the up arrow. And the up arrow just get triggered by the actual arrow keys. So it's not some special command, it's just from the keyboard itself. And now what I'll do is the analog sticks. And I'll you know, stick it to some, you know, random combination, because it doesn't really matter per se. I've already technically done A, so I can't use WASD. I'll just use, I'll just shift it one to the right. I'll use ESDF. So there'll be S, F, E, D. And now for the right analog stick, I'll just do it as, I J K L so J L I K. That's the analog sticks done. Let's do start and select. If they don't appear, but they are getting triggered here, you can do, obviously it's getting triggered for two joysticks as well. So you can ignore the second one. Then you just scroll down and you'll be one of these buttons. So button eight. And for starter, press enter. Select, I believe, is button seven, or it's not select, it's like the option in menu, but I'll call it select. I'm gonna put that as the backspace. Now let's do the triggers. So RB, no, the buttons, I should say, show the button. So I'll put this as page up. And RT, I'll do that as page down. LB, I'll do that as home. LT was that, and I'll put that as end. Again, you can map it however you want. You can map it to anything random, because as long as you're not gonna be using the keyboard and trying to figure that out, you should be good to go. And now, what what do we have left? Oh, we got the analog sticks left. I don't know why not? <laughs> the Game Boy Advance doesn't need this many keys, but you might want the analog stick in there. So I'll just put that as like insert, and go to nine, I'll put that one as delete. I think that's everything covered. And you can press X. It doesn't close it down. If you do want to close it down, <clears throat> you just right click, 
like terminate, but you don't want to actually close down because you need to be open to detect the you know keys. And now if we open MGBA. I know this has been a longer video than you probably hoped it to be, but you know I wanted to make sure you know I did this video and that you could actually connect to your Xbox controller. So go to settings. Not in controllers now because this is we map this as a keyboard essentially a reduced keyboard but still a keyboard. Go to keyboard and now let's say if we go to there let's say if we pressed A it detects it as A but if we want to uh, like an arrow or like an analog stick we can do that. But what we'll do is we'll say set all and this will just go to the top one so uh, up right down left. And for A, I'll do A, and for B, I'll do B, backspace, so select here, backspace, return, happy with that. And for the shoulder button, I'll do, ooh, I'll let that finish. That's the smart lines going up. <laughs> it goes up at sunrise. Okay, so LB and RB, and that's it. Click apply and just make sure just go back, make sure it has apply before you try and play and then get upset. Yeah, it's looking all good. And now let's just play my game. And uh, do, 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 recent. It would be Crash Bandicoot. I'll turn the volume down though. Okay. I think anyone that's watched this channel long enough knows that I love Crash Bandicoot. So if I press A, you know, it goes through all this. And then I should be able to use the arrows. I don't know if I have a... Uh, yeah, I do. I'll just load in. I don't fancy playing a water level. Temple of Boom, I'll play that one. And so spin. Yeah, that brings that up. And that's it. Uh, obviously start will pause it okay so that's how you set up an xbox controller to your windows machine to emulate with a four game boy advance emulation if you have any questions feel free to join the discord group in the discord group there's a mgba channel feel free to post there and as usual i'll see you in the next video and more emulation content coming soon and soon or later on today i'll be doing a ps4 controller setup video with mgba and then some new emulator content as well. See you soon. Bye-bye.